So what is master batching? The Soap Guild defines master batching as mixing two or more raw materials in a pre-made bulk batch separately from the manufacturing process. Basically, you are making up the combined ingredients you use on a regular basis ahead of time in a large batch so it's ready to use. What can you master batch in soap making? Well, there are four main areas you can master batch in soap making, and that is lye, oils, fragrances and colourants. For home and small batch makers, master batching oils, fragrances and colourants are not helpful. Because you want to learn and experiment, you will want to use different combinations of oils, try out different fragrances and experiment with colour. Master batching these removes a lot of the creativity from soap making, in my opinion. Lye, on the other hand, is a great and ideal candidate for small batch makers, and that's for a few good reasons. One, the making of a lye solution is an exothermic reaction, meaning it generates heat. Master batching means you only have to wait once for that master batch to cool, and then you have a ready supply of lye to use at any point. Two, it means you can fit your soaping into an evening or a couple of hours rather than spending time waiting for a lye solution to cool to room temperature, or needing to remember to make it the night beforehand. Three, it gives you freedom of creativity and it's adaptable to any recipe. And number four, number four, you can add easily burnt or scalded liquids into a recipe more easily without having to freeze them. But before you start, master batching lye solution involves creating a concentrated sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide solution. It's important that you follow lye safety procedures whilst doing this. These include gloves and long sleeves, long leg coverings and closed toed shoes. Most importantly, safety goggles and glasses must be worn. Often people talk about being scared of making lye, but you don't need to be. However, you should respect it and be prepared. A sodium hydroxide solution spilt on skin will certainly irritate and may cause damage if it's not properly dealt with. So if you spill any of this solution on your skin, first of all, don't panic. The best course of action is to immediately put that affected area under cold running water for at least 10 minutes. You want to treat it just like an oil burn or a flame burn. This will dilute the solution on the skin and hopefully prevent burns. However, like with any chemical burns, if you're at all worried about it, go and seek medical advice. Goggles are a non-negotiable. Should any lye solution hit your eye, it can cause much more damage to the sensitive membranes of the eye, leading to certainly irritation, vision problems, and even blindness. Personally speaking, I have a chemical eye wash station within reach every time I soap. And I prefer to have this within grasp and with me at all times, even when I'm wearing goggles. I'd rather be safe than sorry. So that's it for the safety briefing. Let's get on to master batching our lye. How do you master batch a lye solution? Well, master batching a lye solution is simply a 50-50 mix of your sodium hydroxide and your water. What does that mean? Well, for every 100 parts of lye solution, you will have 50 parts of water and 50 parts of sodium hydroxide. It's also known as a one-to-one -one ratio. So in 100 grams of lye solution, there will be 50 grams of sodium hydroxide and 50 grams of distilled water. And this is really important when it comes to using that lye solution later on. So to master batch a lye solution, it's very simple. Now, in my example, I'm going to use a thousand grams. So I'm going to make up a thousand grams of lye solution. But it's the same if you make 500 grams or 3000 grams or a ton even. It's the quantities that will change and not the method. For making a lye solution like this, you will need the following ingredients and tools. Sodium hydroxide, distilled water, a lye resistant container, preferably with a screw lid, but you don't have to have a screw lid as long as you've got something that you can put on the top of it. Now, I prefer to use a plastic container with a screw lid. And if you're going to use a plastic container, you need it to be either high density polyethylene or HDPE, which has the recycling code of two, or polypropylene, which has a PP and a recycling code of five on it. You'll also need a jug big enough to hold more than the required amount of water you want to use and a container that will hold your sodium hydroxide to add to your water. You want something lye resistant to stir with, either a stick, a spoon or a rod. Make sure it's stainless steel if you're using metal. You need a pipette 
and I often have a small artist's fan brush handy just for getting those last little lye crystals into the water. And then you want a deep tray or a flat bottomed bowl uh, that's big enough to stand your lye resistant container into. Firstly, you want to, in a clean jug, measure out at least 20 to 50 grams more distilled water than you're going to need. So in my case, I'm going to measure out somewhere in the region of 520 to 550 grams of distilled water. Secondly, you're going to pour just under the required amount of water for your recipe into your lye resistant container. So in my case, that's going to be somewhere from 480 to 490 grams. Then you're going to add your additional water using the pipette and you're going to bring it up to exactly 500 grams. You want to bring it up to, but not over. Uh, I prefer to just kind of get it to that 500 grams using the pipette and then stopping rather than having to pull water out and wondering if that's contaminated. At least I've got a clean jug it's gone into. So any water that I've left in the jug can go back into the uh, to the big container I've got. And I've not really uh, put it into a container that may have lye already in it. So uh, that's the way I do it. But you want exactly 500 grams. Now, it's important to note that master batching needs to be as accurate as possible. So take your time at this point and get your measurements accurate. Now, in your other container for your sodium hydroxide, you're going to measure out 500 grams of your sodium hydroxide. And again, you need this to be exactly 500 grams, not 499 and not 501, but exactly 500. So what you're going to do now is place your lye container with your water in it inside of your tray or large container, just in case we have any volcanoing. You're gently going to pour in one third of the sodium hydroxide solution into the water and stir it until it clears. You're then going to repeat that twice more each time, adding around about one third of the sodium hydroxide into your water and stirring until it's clear. At that point, you can place the lid onto your container. Um, now, if it's a screw lid, you want to screw it on and then give it a couple of turns back so you've got some airflow to allow any of the gases to escape. Or if you've got a loose lid, pop that on and you're just going to allow it to cool. If you've made lye before, this is exactly how you would make it usually. But this time we are using the minimum amount of water that you can when making up a lye solution. And that's why it's important to be accurate. You don't really want to be making a lye solution that is stronger than a 50-50 mix. So how do we use our master batched lye solution? Using master batch lye solution is so easy, but you will need to do a tiny little bit of maths to make sure that everything is right, but it is a small amount and it's really easy to get to grips with. So I'm going to use a made up recipe with whole numbers to make the maths really easy. And then a bit later on, what we'll do is use some real world examples. Let's say that your recipe requires the following sodium hydroxide and water. Sodium hydroxide at 50 grams and water at 100 grams. How do you use your master batch lye solution in this example? Easy. We know our master batch lye solution is a one to one ratio. So for every one gram of sodium hydroxide, we have one gram of water. So when using master batch lye to get the right amount of lye solution, you just need to double the weight of the sodium hydroxide that's stated in your recipe. Once you have that amount, we then need to measure out the rest of the liquid or, or water from our recipe. So if we look at the recipe again, so our recipe needs 100 grams of water and the master batch has already got 50 grams of water in it. Don't forget it's one to one with sodium hydroxide and water. And to get the remaining water that we need, all you actually need to do is subtract the sodium hydroxide weight away from the liquid weight. So we've got 50 grams of sodium hydroxide and 100 grams of liquid. So all we'll need to do is take 50 away from the 100 and we get 50 grams of water left to put into our recipe. It really is that simple. Now, if you feel that you might have mucked up a little bit and you want to check, when you're doing your maths bit, you want to just add everything up and they should come to the same total. So we've got 50 grams of sodium hydroxide and 100 grams of water. And we've got 100 grams of our master batch solution and an additional 50 grams of water. So they both equal 150. If they don't add up to the right amounts, you've done some incorrect maths, start again and you should be able to get it. Let's look at a real world example for a minute. Let's take the recipe that you find in the description box of this video. I've run that through a soap calculator, soap making friend, and we can see that we need 84.03 grams of liquid and 52.19 grams of sodium hydroxide. 
Again, we know our master batch solution is going to be a one-to-one. -one. So to get the right amount of master batch solution, we double our sodium hydroxide amount from the recipe, which works out at 52.19 grams times two. That gives us 104.38. So we need 104.38 grams of master batched lye solution. Our liquid amount was 84.03 grams. Now we know that our sodium hydroxide was 52.19 and we just need to work out the rest of the liquid that we need to put into our recipe, which is simply the 84.03 grams of liquid minus the 52.19 grams of sodium hydroxide. And that gives us a total of 31.84. So we just need to add an additional 31.84 grams of liquid to our 104.38 grams of lye solution. Now a little bit about water discount and water replacement. In soaping, there's a term known as water discounting or using less water than originally called for in a recipe. It's also known as a water discount. For me, I find this term a little bit confusing because whilst there's a minimum suggested amount of liquid that you need to put to make a lye solution, which is 50-50, there is no upper limit of the amount of liquid in a recipe. That's ultimately personal preference. And it's based on things like unmolding time, the oils you've used, personal opinion, all of that. And as such, you just don't have this upper limit. So a discount from whatever it might be is very odd for me. However, with master batching, you can still water discount, but it's actually a lot easier to do. Let's say you make a soap and you've made it with a suggested liquid amount, but it's too soft to unmold. And once it's cured, you, you it doesn't feel quite right to you. And you think, well, if I take some of the water out, would it be a better soap? In order to do that, it's very easy. You've got the minimum amount of water that you can ever use for your lye solution in your master batch. So because you already have that minimum amount required, the extra amount of water that you're adding, you can reduce that down to wherever you want it to be. Conversely, if you needed to, and you find that it's crumbly, you just haven't got the working time and all of those things, you can increase the water. So that water discount that you have at that end is flexible. You've already got the amount of lye in your lye solution that will saponify the oils you want to saponify. The water amount is very, very flexible and a master batch lye solution means that you can change that water amount quite easily and you can do some really good testing with it to understand where your recipe needs to sit as far as the amount of water you want to use. Anyway, how does a water discount differ to a water replacement? Well, in any recipe, you can choose to swap out a portion or all of your water for another liquid or swap a portion out for puree or juice or something else. One problem that soapers find with using things like milk or high sugar liquids in their soaps, one problem with using things like milk or juice is a higher sugar content. As the lye reaction is exothermic, that sugar can caramelize during, and especially with milk, you can end up with an odd smell or a really orange color. With a master batch, the portion of liquid left out of the master batch doesn't have to be water when it's added back in, and it doesn't have to be added to the lye water. So you could make up that liquid portion with milk, add it to the oils and blend it in. You can use beers, add it to the oils instead of the lye solution. Avocados can be stick blended in, purees, anything that you wish to replace water in your recipe with can just be placed straight into the oils because your lye solution is already ready to go to saponify the amount of oil you've got in your recipe. There's just a few other things about master batching that I think is really useful to know. So when you're using your master batch lye and you add the additional water or liquid into the actual liquid of your master batch, you're going to increase the temperature ever so slightly, maybe by 10 or 15 degrees. Now, for me, that's a great thing because when I've melted my oils and I've got them sitting there, my lye solution and my oils tend to be at the same temperature 
and they're coming down together. So I'm not waiting and I'm not playing with the oils and I'm not thinking, right, that's come down too quickly. I need to reheat my oils or the lye solution isn't coming down quick enough and I need to get this done by midnight. I find with the master batch lye solution, the temperatures sit very nicely together and you can actually crack on with making soap a lot quicker than if you're continually waiting for your lye solution to come down and heating your oils back up just to kind of keep them at a level. This is really important for working with a master batch lye solution, but you are dealing with a strong base solution and it's harmful if you don't respect it. You need to use proper lye handling procedures when you're dealing with a master batch lye solution. Even if you are moving it, placing it down or tidying around it, you never know if the lid's on properly and accidents do happen. You can save yourself a lot of trouble making sure you've got gloves and goggles on. Never leave the lid off of a lye solution, whether it's been master batched or not. Sodium hydroxide will absorb moisture from the atmosphere. It essentially then dilutes your lye solution and it's weaker than the full lye solution that you've made. So when you're not using it, make sure you have it covered and tightly sealed because you don't want that additional moisture from the atmosphere going into your lye solution, making it weaker and therefore adding more water into your recipe it could give you glycerin rivers, a softer soap and a harder unmolding time. And finally, master batching is a really useful tool to have under your belt, especially if you're thinking about upscaling your soap production. Or if you find that making lye just scares you and you don't want to do it too often, actually making master batches means you don't have to deal with that heat so often. And as long as you're happy to store it in lye safe containers, and you can always use doubled up containers to make sure that it's not going to spill anywhere, it will help you with your soap making and mean that you can make less lye solutions, but more soap overall. Anyway, guys, I hope that that's helped you in some way to understand what master batching is and how to use a master batch lye solution. Now, if you've enjoyed today's tutorial, why not give this video a like? It really helps. And if you want to help a little bit more, why not subscribe to my channel? It does help me grow, but it also means I can make more videos for all of you out there. Anyway, Soapsters, without further ado, I'll see you next time. Bye.